Hello everyone, it is so good to be with you again. Today our theme is God never changes. He stays true to His promises. Now God is faithful and is unchanging. He stays true to His promises. That is a theme that we see right through the Bible. But in order to really trust God, you need to accept this truth with your whole heart. Faithfulness is one of God's core characteristics. It denotes the firmness and the constancy of, he, of God in His relationships with men, especially His own people. God is not only true because He is God, in contrast with those who are not God. He is also true because He is faithful in keeping His promises. Now there are many different promises in the Bible and different examples in the Bible of how His promises were made true, how it became fulfilled. Um, I'm thinking of God's promise to um, Abraham and how Joshua took the nation into the promised land. I'm reminded by Ezra and Ezra 1 describing how God used a pagan king to let the Israelites who were in, in, um, uh, in Babylon return as Jeremiah has promised in chapter 29 after 70 years of being out of their country. And then of course there is Isaiah's um, promise in Isaiah 7 and 9 of the birth of a child and how Luke describes it in his epistle, actually in, in his gospel, how Luke describes the birth of Jesus. Promises in the Bible fulfilled in history. Because he is faithful and because he is unchangeable, God keeps his promises. Now, today we are not going to focus on these examples in the Bible of how promises were fulfilled. I'd rather that we go back to the Bible and look at a specific character in the Bible, Abram, and how he, because of God being faithful, believed that and what we can learn from him. How we can learn to live from God's promises. And I've realized it that it's not only meant for us as, as individual Christians to do that, but also for us as a church. We should learn to live on God's promises. So let's read from uh, chapter 11 in Hebrews. And uh, we do there from verses 8 Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 13, and then 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would rather receive, sorry, would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, we will later on describe what that means, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. Amazing. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised, 
They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admired that they were aliens and strangers on earth. And then we skip a few verses between verses 13 and 16 and go to 17. By faith, Abram, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promise was about to sacrifice the one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abram reasoned that God could raise the dead and figuratively speaking he did receive Isaac from the dead. Now in scripture Abram is portrayed as the father of all who believe. Paul even said that though used those words in Romans 4 verse 11. To learn about faith it therefore makes sense to go to the character of Abram. And in Genesis 12 to 25, we learn all about his journey of faith. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear that those who believe are the true children of Abraham. He says in Galatians 7, verse, sorry, Galatians 3, verses 7 and 29, Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. God called Abram to leave his home and his people and promised Abram and Sarah a son. But they had to wait 25 years for the fulfillment of this promise. Waiting is one of the most difficult disciplines in life. Yet, true faith is able to wait for the fulfillment of God's purposes in God's time. But while we are waiting, we cannot only sit back and do nothing. We have to obey. Now let's look more closely to how Abram obeyed and followed the Lord's commands. The first thing we read in verse 8 of chapter 11 in Hebrews is, By faith Abram obeyed. Now this term that's been used there as obey, it's, it's a very interesting term. It is to, to answer to a call. Like for instance when someone knock at your door to, to make sure to go and answer that call. Uh, it's to pay attention. Um, but to pay attention with the inclination to do uh, or to react on, on that call. Um, another way to put it is acting under the authority of someone speaking. It is to leave everything and pay your full attention. That is what Abraham did. And that is what we admire from him, what we can learn from him. The second thing that we see also in verse 8 is that Abram totally obeyed. He focused, left everything and focused on the Lord's will without even knowing where he was going. This is blind faith. But did Abram's faith make him blind? No. On the contrary. His faith gave him eyes to see the true future, the future beyond. And then we read a third wonderful lesson from Abram's life in verse 10. Abram was looking for the city without foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Abram did not fixate on his physical situation. He didn't look only to his circumstances. Abram had eyes for the heavenly city. And he lived in the time to come. He realized and he practiced the fact that he was only an alien and a stranger on earth. His actual place was in heaven. And he lived with eyes fixed on God who kept his inheritance safe there in heaven for him. 
even when all the signs were against him. And even though he did not know how God is going to manage, Abram kept on believing. And we're going to get to the reason very soon why it is, why he did that and what is so important. But it's important that the Bible here says in verses 8 to 10 that Abram lived in tents because he was a stranger and a pilgrim. And that image is actually to, to let us know that Abram was always ready to move on. He did not become so part of his situation that if God called him, he could not move. And Christians today are also strangers and aliens in this world. And we should also be so available for the Lord. We should not be so attached to what our lives are about that we are not open to answer the call when the Lord's bell rings, if we can put it that way. And we have to leave everything and follow Him like the disciples when Jesus called them. And then the fourth thing that we learn is in verses 11 to 12. Abram also obeyed even when he did not know how God was going to accomplish what he promised. And then we also see the big reason in verse 11, the second part. Because Abram considered God faithful who made the promises. Beloved, that for me was really the most important lesson that I've learned from Abraham. He, he could leave everything. He could follow the Lord with his whole heart because he trusted God. He considered God faithful who made the promises. Now we must remember both Abraham and Sarah were actually too old to have children. God promised them uh, children but they were too old for that and now let's read how Paul describes that in verse sorry in Romans 4 from verse 8 Paul writes against all hope Abram in hope believed and so he became the father of many nations just as had been said to him so shall your offspring be that was God's promise Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet, he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. God has power to fulfill His promises. That is what we should hold fast to. Also as a church, in times that we have uncertainty and that we have challenges. Also as people living in very difficult times with all the challenges that we experience now worldwide. We should know God has the power to fulfill His promises. When we look at the, the, the story of the birth of Jesus in how Luke describes it, we see that at first there was uh, the priest who asked the Lord when, when he was told that his wife is going to give birth to John the Baptist, he asked, how can this be? But when the same angel told Mary that she is going to give birth to Jesus, her response was, how shall this be? Not, how can it be possible? How are you going to do it? I would like to know this. It's going to be wonderful. It's only through faith that we clearly can see what God is doing. And that is what the first verse of this chapter 11 in Hebrew says. Now faith is being sure that what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Sure of what we hope for and certain of that what is still unseen. By faith, Abram considered God faithful to had made, who had made the promise to be believed 
and to be trusted. Trusting God is therefore an important prerequisite to have real faith. And then the final lesson that we have from Abram here in Hebrews 11 is in verses 17 to 19. Abram obeyed God by faith when he did not know why God was doing what God was doing. God ordered him to take his son as a living sacrifice. Why would God want Abram to sacrifice his son when it was the Lord who gave him that son? All of a future nation's promises was wrapped up in Isaac. But Abram took his son and willingly went for that altar because he believed, he was convinced that God is able to raise him from the dead if it was necessary. So, beloved, we see that the tests of faith become more difficult as we walk with God, yet the rewards are more wonderful. And therefore, a life of faith enjoys only some measures of God's reward here on earth, but not most of it. There is so much yet to come. And we can trust that it will be because God is faithful. He keeps His promises. And I want you to memorize Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. That verse helps us to always remember God will keep His promises because the verse says God is not human that He should lie. Not a human being that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? The answer is not written there, but the answer actually is no. Because God's word is unchanging. Because God is faithful and unchanging. When he speaks, there is no doubt to the truth in his words. And that his promise will be fulfilled. Even in Isaiah 55, we read verses 10 and 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven... And do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth uh, and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I pro propose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God is unchanging, beloved. Because he's faithful to his word. Now you know, in my preparation, I looked at many verses of promises for the church. And then I realized if I'm going to give that to you now, it's going to take our, our attention away from this wonderful, wonderful lesson from Abram. That he trusted God because he believed God is trustworthy. The other promises we can do at the later stage. But for today, I want to tell you that when God makes promises, He keeps His promises. It may take years, it may take even centuries to make good on His word. But of this you can be sure, He always keeps His promises. For instance, Isaiah predicted the birth of Jesus 600 years before it happened in Isaiah 9 verses 1 to 7. And between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there were those 400 what they call dark years where there was no revelation from God. He didn't speak to the people of Israel for 400 years. But the Bible says in Galatians 4 verses 4 to 5, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And therefore, the birth of Jesus is yet another reminder that God's timing is not our timing, and that He will always fulfill His promises. You can take God at His word. So the question today is, 
Are you trusting in a God who keeps His word? Is that how you think about God? Are there promises in the word that God has made that you need to rely on and rest in? And I also want to ask, do you also believe like Abraham that God is worth trusting today no matter what you are going through? No matter how the signs seem to look. No matter what the odds are. I want to encourage you and I want to encourage our congregation. Do not hesitate. Do not doubt. But consider God faithful to keep the promises He made in the Bible. Of which most of them are meant for you. Amen. Now let us pray together. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we want to glorify you and thank you for the fact that you have given us eternal life. That you've made us that promise and that we know it can be true. It is true. You've even promised us in your word that we, the moment when we believe you, already become part of that life. And now you've also um, told us this morning again that those of us who believe this we are heirs of Abram we are the true children of Abram because Abram is the father of all believers and we believe in you Lord our Heavenly Father we want to glorify your name and thank you that we may be your children thank you for the promises that you've given us and those that we have accepted and that it changed our lives. But now we know growing as your children, there are many more promises that are still uh, important for us in our lives. And we want to pray, help us to learn to know those promises, learn to trust you more and more, and learn to live from those promises. Also the promises that you give us as a church, as a body of Christ on this earth, as your family, we pray that you will guide us and lead us and bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you have a wonderful week and may you find new joy in reading the Bible and, and looking for promises that God makes because we know He will keep it. He does not lie. He holds His promises. May God bless you. Bye.